Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will build Add Employee REST API. Well, let us take a look into the development steps. First, we will create the service layer. Well, if you can see here, the controller layer is depends on service layer and the service layer is depends on a repository layer and we basically create the REST APIs in a controller layer, right? So controller layer is depends on service layer. So let us first create the service layer. Well, we have already created the repository layer, so we don't have to write any methods in a repository layer as of now. So let us first create the service layer and then we'll build the REST API in a controller layer, okay? So create the service layer like we'll create an employee service interface and then we create an employee service IMPL class that implements employee service interface. Next, we'll build the add employee REST API in a controller layer and next we'll test this add employee REST API using Postman client, okay? So let us go to our project in Intage idea and here let us first create the service layer. So go to service package, right click on it, new and then choose our class, select interface. Let us give interface name as employee service. Within employee service interface, let us define the method. So let us give method name, method return type as employee DTO. Let us give method name as create employee and let us pass employee DTO as a parameter to this method. Perfect. Next, let us create employee service sample class that implements this interface and its methods. Next, go to service package, right click on this package, new and then choose package. Let's give package as IMPL. IMPL stands for implementation. So right click on IMPL package, new and then choose your class. Let's give class name as employee service IMPL. Perfect. Next, this class implements employee service interface. And next, go ahead and mouse over in this class. And here you will get the option to implement the methods like the link. So go ahead and click on this implement methods link over here and select the method that you want to implement. Click on OK. Perfect. Next, let us annotate this class with at service annotation and make sure that you choose service annotation from org.springframework.stereotype package. Well, this annotation tells the Spring container to create the spring bean for this class. Next, let us implement create employee method. Well, before implementing this method, let us first inject the dependencies. So here, private employee repository, employee repository. Well, we are going to use constructor based dependency injection to inject the dependencies. And instead of creating the constructor manually, let us use lumbar connotation. So let us annotate this class with at all argument constructor annotation. Okay, now we have injected employee repository, you know, as a dependency. Next, let us implement create employee method. So go to create employee method, and within this create employee method, first we need to convert employee DTO into employee JP entity because we need to store the employee entity into database, isn't it? So here, let's say employee employee equal to let us call employee mapper class to map employee DTO to employee JP entity. So here employee mapper, it has map to employee method and then pass employee DTO. Okay, now we have converted employee DTO to employee JP entity. Next, let us save this employee JP entity into database. So for that, let us call employee repository. It has a save method and then pass employee JP entity object. Perfect. Next, this save method return the saved employee object. So let us get into a local variable. So here employee, and let us give a variable name as saved employee. Next, we need to return saved employee object back to the client. So here let us convert saved employee JP entity into employee DTO. So here let us remove this null and let us type employee mapper. It has map to employee DTO and let us pass saved employee. Perfect. Now we have implemented create employee method. Next, go to controller package over here. Right click on controller package, new and then to Java class. Let us give class name as employee controller. Next, let us annotate this employee controller class with at rest controller annotation. Well, once we annotate a class with at rest controller annotation, then this class becomes a Spring MUC rest controllers 
and this class is capable to handle HTTP requests. Next, let us annotate this class with one more annotation that is at request mapping annotation. Well, here we are using at request mapping annotation to define the base URL for all the HTTPs that we are going to build within this controller. So here, let us give the base URL slash API slash employees. Okay, perfect. Next, within this employee controller, let us first inject the dependencies. So private employee service. And instead of creating the constructor manually, let us annotate this class with add our argument constructor annotation. Okay. Next, let us build add employer HT API. So here let me write the comment build add employee REST API. Well, creating a REST API using Spring Boot is very simple. First, we need to create a method and then we'll make that method as a REST API by using Spring annotations. So here, let's first create a method public. And let's do return type of the method as a response entity. So response entity is a generic class. We have to pass the type. So here, let us pass employee DTO as a type. Next, let us give method name as create employee and let us pass employee DTO as a parameter to this method and next here let us call employee service it has create employee method and then pass employee DTO object as a parameter to this method and this create employee method returns a saved employee so here employee DTO and let us give the variable name as saved employee next let us have a return statement return object of response entity so let us pass value to the constructor so first value as saved employee second value as http status code so here just type http status dot created next let us make this method as a rest api by using spring annotations so here let us annotate this method with add post mapping annotation well, we use add post mapping annotation to map the incoming HTTP post request to this method. Next, let us use one more annotation here that is add request body annotation. Well, this add request body annotation will extract the JSON from the HTTP request and it will convert that JSON into employee DTO Java object. Okay, perfect. Now we have created add employee REST API. Next, let us run our Spring Boot application and let us test this REST API using Postman client. So from here, I am going to stop and rerun the Spring Boot application. Well, notice here our Spring Boot application is up and running in an embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. Next, let's go to the Postman client over here. And here, let me create a new request. Let us choose HTTP post method and let us enter the request URL HTTP localhost 8080 slash api slash employees and next go to the body select raw select content of json and within a body we need to pass the json object so here let's create a json object so first name let us give first name as ramesh and then last name Let us give last name as Fartari and then email. Let us give email as Ramesh at the rate gmail.com. Well, if you can go to our project in IntelliJ IDEA and go to create employee REST API, and here you can see employee DTO. And if you go inside employee DTO, and this employee DTO class has the fields first name, last name, email. And if you go to postman client, and if you can notice the JSON over here the attributes name like first name last name email so whenever you pass the json in the request make sure that the json attributes should be same as the dto class fields because we are using at request body annotation here to extract the json and convert that json into employee dto java class object and in order to convert a json into java object the json attributes and java object you know fields should be same okay perfect Next, let's go to Postman Client over here. Next, go ahead and click on Send button. And there we go. We got a response of the REST API. And if you can notice here the status 201 created. 
and the saved employee object in the response. Next, let us verify whether this record is stored in a MySQL database table or not. So let's go to MySQL Workbench over here and go to employees database, just refresh, go to employees table, select rows and there we go. A Ramesh employee successfully stored in a employees table. All right, it means we have successfully built add employee rest api in next lecture we'll build get single employee rest api all right great i will see you in the next lecture